It is Friday, November 16. The weekend is so close, I can smell its feet. If you're always stuck at your job working hard for the man or woman, and maybe you have family responsibilities eating away at your gaming leisure time, try and allocate a few gaming hours over the next few days. Go on, you're totally worth it. Welcome back to Foxy Games UK. I'm Fox, your source of regular, reliable gaming news and rumour. First and foremost, happy fifth birthday, PlayStation 4. I neglected to do this in yesterday's video, but I'm sure most of you can agree it's been an incredible incredible journey filled with fantastic experiences and tons of money spent in my household. No regrets though. Thank you Sony for creating an amazing value product. Here's to the future PlayStation generations and the advancement of all platforms including Xbox, Nintendo and PC gaming. We are one huge community made up of a subset of smaller communities whether you're willing to accept it or not. So, a lot's been happening over the past 24 hours, as reported via Variety and Gaming Former, and a whole host of other mainstream outlets. I mean, Twitter has been blowing up with this news, and sure, a surprise for many, Sony PlayStation has confirmed that the company will be skipping E3 for the first time in the event's 24-year history. Here's the full story. Sony Interactive Entertainment, the world's leading video game manufacturer currently experiencing record high sales and growth of its PlayStation 4 gaming console already surpassing the PlayStation 3 in half the time and nearly 100 million units sold globally, has bizarrely decided not to host its annual press conference. Sony will have no presence whatsoever during next year's industry-leading E3 Expo. The news was buried inside the Entertainment Software Association's announcement of the 2019 show, quoting competitors Nintendo and Microsoft. Sony confirmed their absence in a statement to industry entertainment magazine Variety. The following is a Sony press release and I quote. As the industry evolves, Sony Interactive Entertainment continues to look for inventive opportunities to engage the community. PlayStation fans mean the world to us and we always want to innovate, think differently and experiment with new ways to delight gamers. As a result, we have decided not to participate in E3 2019. We are exploring new and familiar ways to engage our community throughout 2019 and can't wait to share our plans with you. Hmm. So, when asked if Sony would push its event off-site, similar to how Electronic Arts provides a show adjacent to E3, PlayStation Senior Vice President of Communications Jennifer Clark elaborated further, saying, We will not activate or hold a press conference around E3. Sony's withdrawal from E3 likely comes as a disappointment to fans that look forward to the company's stage show as a centerpiece for the expo as a whole, from huge announcements like Spider-Man and Horizon Zero Dawn to tense on-stage demos like The Last of Us. Sony has always brought a certain flair to the show. The press conference battle between Microsoft and Sony, especially once Nintendo changed to a video format, often the talk of E3. This will be the first time in E3's 24-year history that PlayStation will not be attending the event. It is also the second major PlayStation event cancelled by the company in recent months, the company's own PlayStation experience. So what gives? Well, if you'll cast your mind back to September when Sean Layden, chairman of Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios, said the company would not be hosting this year's PlayStation Experience, citing a lack of new games to showcase. Here's a quote from the Sony boss man. Now we have Spider-Man out the door. We're looking down into 2019 to games like Dreams and Days Gone, but we wouldn't have enough to bring people all together in the same location in North America to that event. We don't want to set expectations really high and then not deliver on them. Quite telling. So, PlayStation Experience started four years ago as a celebration for PlayStation's 20th anniversary and as a way to bring PlayStation fans together for a consumer event, at least according to Layden. The event had since expanded over the past few years as a place to give news updates. This year, though, Layden expressed that we have a lot of progress that we're making in our games, but also that there's not much to share at this point for upcoming titles. The same could be true for E3 2019, though that does raise concerns about the PlayStation 4 itself and a potential lack of upcoming titles. The timing also comes just after Sony CEO Kenichiro Yoshida confirmed that PlayStation 5 will be a true next-generation hardware and is an absolute necessity, as reported on this very channel. Here's a quote to jog your memory. 
At this point, what I can say, it's necessary to have next generation hardware, Yoshida stated. Yoshida declined to confirm whether or not the next PlayStation console will be called the PlayStation 5, which seems like the obvious and natural choice. I think it's safe to assume there will be a number 5 in there somewhere. While so consoles are traditionally announced at E3, the PlayStation 4's announcement actually occurred at a Sony-specific New York City event, and Microsoft's Xbox One was unveiled at the company's own campus. In general, game consoles are facing stiffer competition from not just traditional push and pull with a massive PC games market, but a growing mobile game market too, with an exceeded 26 billion already in 2018. Sony's John Kadira also intimated over the summer that he still sees potential in portable gaming and thinks it shouldn't be separated from console gaming, but seen as another way to experience the medium. As consumers find ways to game beyond traditional gaming dedicated hardware, where the development of such hardware naturally comes into question, just asks Nintendo. Even more, the option of game streaming is becoming a more tangible reality as Microsoft revealed with its game streaming tech, Project X Cloud, post XO18. In a world where you could potentially stream the same games on any device, wouldn't console choice become even more irrelevant? Ubisoft's Yves Gilmot may have just the answer, stating back in June, Gilmot's prediction streaming will be more accessible to players making dedicated or expensive hardware less necessary. Here's a quote, there will be one more console generation, then after that, we will be streaming. All of us. Gilmot quipped. Well, 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 what a palaver. Have you even been on the social popular media site Twitter lately, I've got to tell you it's real trippy, remarkably so. Even when Sony chooses to do nothing, everybody's talking. Mindshare, this company generates for itself. Sometimes without any effort of its own is freaking mind-blowing. Hashtag PSX 2018, hashtag E3 2019, hashtag play games not corporations it is unfortunate if this is disagreeable to some of you but the fact of the matter is we know more or less about every key playstation 4 exclusive in the pipeline i'm just keeping it real if you're still in denial regarding the beginning of the end of playstation 4 you are setting yourself up for a lifetime of little disappointments you chose late adoption with ps4 it's your issue and i can be nothing but brutally honest about it so what does this say about playstation PlayStation 5 and its inevitable reveal. It's no longer a matter of if, but when. So, Sony is skipping out on E3 2019, triggering a bunch of new PS5 reveal rumors, and now many believe a proposed 2019 reveal will be followed by a 2020 launch. When I told people the PS4 generation is slowly but surely being retired and starting from 2018, some found it an extremely hard pill to swallow. But if you want to get your mind right, swallow it, you will. Let's face the facts. I know in the age of Trumpism, it may be asking just a little too much, but let's pretend for a minute, politically, 2016 never happened. Then you'll clearly see by mid-2019, Sony will have skipped two major events in succession. PSX and E3 2019, indeed, it's still incredibly hard to believe Sony will not be attending E3 next year. Bad news for the E3 organization, good news for a potential Sony PlayStation 5 event showcase and a 2020 launch still possible within 2019's fiscal year and in March 31st. 2020. I'm also aware of some within our beloved community taking issue with Xbox tweeting six months in advance. Here's a quote. We look forward to seeing you at E3 2019. Just following Sony's shock announcement itself won't be attending E3. You can't blame Microsoft for digging the hills in. It's called capitalizing. Look, and in all seriousness, if Microsoft doesn't win E3 2019, it might be time to prototype a new Zoom device or focus on Windows-based tablets because the game will definitely be over. Indeed, the best thing that can happen for Team Xbox is the start of a new generation. I'm sure I'm not alone when I say I'm pretty much tired of the endless criticism levied at certain platforms by opposing sides. It's been five long years of petulance on both sides, both sides. I look forward to competing, really seeing competing platforms reset to zero. There are a lot of mixed and somewhat fuzzy opinions on this, though it must be said the problem with social media outlets like 
Twitter is. Too many using it believe their worthless opinion is so much more fundamentally important than anyone else's that we're all supposed to sit up and pay attention. Not so. The reality is most people are nothing more than a deluded mimicry of someone else's ideas and philosophy. There is indeed nothing new under the sun. And in regards to the E3 event itself, the Entertainment Software Association or the ESA has hosted E3 since its inception back in 1995. The trade association is made up of video games largest and most notable publishers including Sony Interactive Entertainment and has has recently made moves to transition E3 from less of an industry event to a fan-inclusive one. Game Informer and I imagine many other media outlets have reached out to the ESA regarding Sony's announcement and were informed they plan to release a statement at some stage later today. Here's a quote from Game Informer's Imran Khan. Sony could take this opportunity to build a fan expo like BlizzCon, which takes place when timing is right for Sony. Or the platform holder could go down the more direct route like Nintendo, leveraging its own social channels to promote its products globally. The other side of that argument is that E3 is when the industry has the world's attention and Sony could be missing out on that opportunity. Hmm. Strange times, strange times indeed. We'll very likely be discussing this and more on the RGT podcast later today. Hopefully you'll join the fun and frolics. More importantly, what do you think about Sony pulling away from E3 in 2019? Does this change your view of the show? Let us know in the comments below. And like I said, if Microsoft cannot walk away with E3 2019 with absolutely no competition to speak of, then I don't know what that company can do. But let's hope for the best for Microsoft. We really want them to compete in a massive way next generation. We cannot have Sony monopolizing video game home consoles. As usual, a link to all content covered today can be found in the video's description when and where applicable. And while you're there, share your thoughts and opinions on today's news because that unfortunately brings us to the end of another video. But let's continue the discussion in the comments. For more regular PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and next-gen news updates, subscribe to Foxy Games UK. Remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss content. Thumbs up if you like it here and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video. And if you really like what I do, consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon and or grab yourself a Foxy Games UK branded t-shirt or hoodie available in white, grey and military green. You'll find both Patreon and Foxy Games UK branded clothing links in this video's description and in my profile box on Twitter. I really appreciate the support. And that concludes our time together today. It was great hanging out. Until the next video, always remember, play games, not corporations.